Good afternoon, everyone. As was mentioned, uh, my name is Diogo Monica. I'm the security lead at Docker, and that is my day job. At night, I'm actually also an IEEE volunteer. So as you might imagine, I don't really have that much time to sleep anymore. However, today, I'm not going to really talk about Docker that much. What I really want to talk about is cloud, open source, and security. Not really cybersecurity, but just security. Let's just call it security. Before I go into any of these three topics, though, I wanted to talk about something else. In particular, I want to talk about celebrities. Yes, celebrities. I'm actually originally from Portugal, Lisbon. And when I moved to the United States around five years ago, one of the things that I found really surprising was the celebrity culture. Everybody seemed interested in understanding what celebrities are thinking, what celebrities are doing, and really what celebrities are buying. And that, that felt weird to me. People actually spend a lot of time and money on tabloids and reading celebrity blogs. So even though right now I'm still completely indifferent to celebrity gossip, and I really don't read celebrity blogs, there's one thing about celebrities that I've always thought it was interesting. It was just something particularly interesting about something that they do. And that is celebrity endorsements. So as we all know, celebrities endorse tons of things. They go all the way from soda, Coke, to some fast food chain, such as McDonald's, to actual things that you can wear, such as a watch or a purse. But the interesting thing about celebrity endorsements is that these are incredibly successful, smart, rich people. They can essentially afford anything that money can buy. Yet, when they buy something that is a commodity, when they buy a product that all of us can buy, that sends an incredibly strong message. The message is, this product is the best product that money can buy. And if we take this to the extreme, Think about non-superfluous endorsements. Think about a celebrity endorsing something that they're actually an expert on. This usually happens with music or happens with uh, athletes, right? Where they're endorsing something, they're endorsing a product that actually has the potential of changing the outcome of what they're doing, the performance, or really making them win or lose or have good performance or bad performance, right? So a perfect example of this is actually, actually Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson is a famous US athlete. He's a sprinter. He actually, in 1996, he went to the Olympics final wearing these very tailored golden Nike shoes in the final of the Olympics. And the interesting thing here is not only they nicknamed them the man with the golden shoes, which, by the way, is not originally, uh, original at all, but the interesting thing is that, turns out, these shoes are not actually made of gold. If any of you has any illusions that you can run 200 meters in under 20 seconds, you can actually buy these shoes. Go ahead. You're still not going to run 20 meters, 200 meters in under 20 seconds, but you can buy them. You can afford them. So at this point, I've been talking about celebrity endorsement and celebrities. And you're probably asking, what the hell does this have to do with security, right? So it turns out that security also has celebrities. A good example is actually our next speaker, Alex Stamos, the CSO of Facebook. Not only is really a master at his craft, he's also an inc incredibly celebrated and sought after and trusted celebrity in the security community. We have celebrities that hack phones. We have celebrities that hack cars. Right now, we even have celebrities that hacked the NSA, right? So it really goes all the way from the amazing InfoSec Taylor Swift to, unfortunately, security having some InfoSec Justin Bieber's, right? So I'm not saying that the glamour of these security celebrities is the same that the glamour and the kind of showmanship, the celebrities that you usually see on TV. What I'm saying is that they do exist, OK? But more interesting than just the mere existence of these celebrities is something else. is the fact that these celebrities are actually making security become a commodity. They are essentially endorsing security products by either building them or just using them. Or the opposite, they're not endorsing security products by going on Twitter and ranting about how bad a vendor is because they treat the security researchers in a bad way. 
And so security is becoming a commodity because these celebrities are doing two big things. There's two big reasons how these, the security and celebrities that are actually helping this become a commodity. It's through open source and the cloud. Around five, four or five years ago, the security community and companies really looked at infrastructure security as if it was um, um, an advantage, as if it was a secret sauce that they had internally, as if it was a competitive advantage. And actually, in the security community, personally, I've always thought that the not build here syndrome was incredibly strong. Everybody kept rebuilding the same things over and over and over again. Maybe it was because companies are afraid of sharing their security, uh, internally security infrastructure. But the reality is that that is changing. That is bad for two reasons. The first one is that if you keep building the same things over and over again, you're actually using incredible security people in a non-efficient way. Guess what? There's not a lot of really good security engineers. Let's make them not build the same things over and over again. And the second reason is actually stronger than that. The second reason is that when it comes to security, especially things like cryptography, believe me when I tell you, you should not be rebuilding this. You should not be reinventing the wheel. If you're using something that has not been condoned and that has not been stamped, approved by one of our InfoSec celebrities, such as um, Dan Bonet uh, or Dan Bernstein, you should absolutely not touch that crypto or that code with a 10-foot stick. Absolutely not. So right now, we have these celebrities contributing to the open source. And there's dozens, there's hundreds of really good, high-quality open source projects being built right now. Right now. So obviously, I have a slide up with a, a bunch of examples, but I would be remiss not to point out that I actually helped build two of these examples. So 22% of this slide is actually self-advertisement and self-publicity. So it's out there. Etsy built Skyline. Skyline allows you to do real-time detection of compromise and indicators. Google built a ton of things and open source a ton of things. GUR, the Google Rapid Response, is a good example. It allows you on your OSX platform or on Windows to do incident response, live incident response, freeze memory of computers, download files, and really do incident response, inspect if a computer got compromised and how it got compromised. That's really cool. Not only that, Google goes one step further. And it is kind of creepy that you put software on all of your employees' laptops. So they went one step further and have an auditable trail of every single investigation that occurs, and they actually have two-person integrity on guaranteeing that you only access a computer if two people say that, yes, there's a reason to access this computer. Netflix is the poster child for open source. They release tons of things, even in the security space, such as Fido, Security Monkey, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have something near and dear to my heart called KeyWiz. I used to work for Square, and at Square, you know Square is a big payments company, we needed a secret distribution system. So earlier this year, we actually open sourced KeyWiz, which is something that Square has been using in production to move more than $20 billion annualized for the past four years. So we're not talking about like just simple open source projects. These things are being used. Vault from HashiCorp is another example of a good secret distribution mechanism. You have Docker's Notary something that we built to allow you to have trust over arbitrary collections of data. Notary is pretty cool because it actually uses the update framework. It uses a mechanism that has, gives you the ability to have a tiered architecture of keys, having online keys and offline keys, really legitimately contributing to the security of your systems right now. You have things like Griffin from Yahoo that allow you to do large-scale scanning for vulnerabilities, and you have the amazing OS query by Mark Arpaia from Facebook. It essentially treats all of your OSX and Linux machines as if it was just a SQL backend, and it's amazing for compliance and incident response. You can see snapshots, query the state of all of these machines. And it's not just about open source projects. The architectures, there's sharing of how these things actually glue together. People are congregating around these projects and other projects, and they're coming together and helping each other out instead of rebuilding the same things over and over again. A good example of that is CFSSL. CFSSL was built by Cloudflare. Cloudflare decided that they needed an internal CA, Certificate Authority to Mint Certificates. So they created this internal uh, project in Go called CFSSL. And other companies started using it. Later on, Let's Encrypt, which is an open and automated way for you, any of you, to get a domain-validated um, TLS certificate, 
actually came to the market and they wanted to build a CA. And CA, like minting certificates for a CA, is their core competence. Yet they didn't build it. They went and got Cloudflare CFSSL to do essentially the most important thing related to security that their community was going to do and that their product and company was going to do. So think how powerful that is. The other way that celebrities are actually helping commoditize security is the cloud. And as a security engineer, I have to be honest here and say that when I think about cloud, what comes to mind is that there is no cloud, it's just somebody else's computer. We've all seen this, it's a super snarky joke, but intuitively, like from a human perspective, obviously you have the tendency to believe that this something that is outside of your control is innately less secure somehow, right? There's this tendency. But in practice, this could not be further away from the truth. Infrastructure companies such as Microsoft and Amazon and Google do an amazing job. Think about it. They are running remote code execution as a service. It is their job to be good about it because if they were not good, they would not be in business. They're running remote code, and you're not. A good example, for example, from Amazon, AWS. AWS says two things, IAM and CloudTrail. IAM essentially allows you to do uh, access control, and CloudTrail allows you to do logging. IAM is a simple control mechanism that is integrated across all of Amazon. And it is an incredibly boring product. Boring. But in security, boring is amazing. You want boring. CloudTrail, with two clicks, you can have an append-only S3 bucket that has every single API call that you have in your infrastructure. If you were trying to build this in-house, you take over a year, you'd spend tons of resources from your engineers, and you probably would build something subpar and less boring. And remember, boring is good. To drive the point further, think of Fortune 500. Out of the Fortune 500, there's actually 92 companies that are actually technology companies. Out of those 92 companies, there's 10, about 10, and this is a personal view, that are actually good at security. Everybody else, not so great. As an anecdotal example of this, I was doing, I was doing consulting and doing instant response for a company, a startup that was using AWS. And they called me one day and said, we received an email from Amazon saying that there was a compromise. We went in, we disabled it. We would love for you to come in and tell us what was happening. Turns out what had happened was incredibly simple. One of their developers accidentally committed AWS credentials to GitHub. So it was public, public for the world to see. So attackers came along, got those credentials, and in under three hours, under three hours, they spun up a bunch of EC2 hosts, and they spent $35,000 mining Bitcoin. $35,000. It took Amazon three hours to detect it. Two months later, I'm talking to a friend, and he actually works at a big established company. And I end up the story, I finish the story, and he said, oh, that's interesting. The same thing happened to us. We also found a Bitcoin monitor in production. But then he proceeded to add, and we only found it three months later. And you think this is just one example, but it's not. This is consistently what is going to happen when you compare cloud platforms and when you compare your own internal Fortune 500 run-of-the-mill internal network. So the reality is that when we talk about security, when you talk about cloud, this is what I want you to think. Just use somebody else's computer. And before you go on Twitter and misquote me and say that the cloud is safe and we're done here, security is done, that's obviously not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is that we keep rebuilding the same things. But these companies, these infrastructure companies, are a lot better than all of us at building this. Not only they're better, they're doing it faster. So you should not re-implement these things. You should use them. And these things are becoming a commodity. They're becoming cheaper and cheaper every day. So if we go back to Michael Johnson, if we go back to our example, what I'm telling you is that these cloud infrastructures and these open source projects they are not superfluous celebrity endorsements. This is not a celebrity endorsing um, a simple soda. These are companies that are using these softwares, these clouds, and these projects in production to protect all of our data. Millions and millions and millions of records, the biggest companies in the world using this. So when it comes to security, what is happening is that security is becoming like Michael Johnson's golden shoes. What is available to the absolute top is also available to all of us. So if I could leave you with one simple idea for you to leave the meeting or to leave this talk, is that when it comes to security, and this only works for security, you should absolutely read the tabloids. Thank you very much.